Hi, welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we'll be covering installing thermal compound in case you uh, weren't able to see it on the giant LCD screen that is now part of our set. And we've also actually done some other renovations. We have a blue wall behind me now and this silver rack which may or may not contain cool goodies later on in the future. So here we are. All you need to do to change the thermal compound on your CPU is you need some microfiber cloth. You need some 99% isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol and you need some new thermal compound for your processor. So depending on whether you have an AMD or an Intel system, this procedure is going to be a little bit different. Uh, one thing that isn't different is locating the CPU on the motherboard. So on an Intel motherboard, you're going to generally find your CPU up on the top left of the board. Same goes for AMD. It'll be covered by a big heat sink and a fan. So that's what we're going to be removing, replacing the thermal compound on, and then putting back on. Okay, so first we'll be covering the AMD portion of our seminar today on thermal compound installation. So the first thing you need to do is find the plastic retention arm. Lift it up to release the tension on the hold down mechanism. Then what you're going to need to do is turn it around and you can see there's a slot right here that fits a slot head screwdriver. So what you do is you push down and then pry the clip away from the motherboard until it's released. Then unplug the fan from the fan header on the motherboard and you should be able to ease your CPU heatsink off of the motherboard. Now, once you remove the CPU heatsink, you'll be able to see that there's a lot of residue left, both on the CPU itself and on the bottom of the heatsink. This needs to be cleaned off, so for that, I recommend using the alcohol and the microfiber cloth I talked about before. So, you just remove the lid of the alcohol, put a little bit on the cloth, and then you use it to wipe down the CPU, just rubbing in a circular motion, and then the heatsink. Now once you've got the majority of the compound off, then switch to a clean part of the cloth, get some new alcohol, and then wipe it down again to make sure that you've got everything off. The whole process should take about as long as it took just now. Okay, so now that we've cleaned the CPU and the bottom of the heatsink, we will be needing some thermal compound. So we recommend MX2, MX2 thermal compound, not uh, 2-XM. MX2, and uh, like many of the things that we've talked about on Tech Tips, MX2 comes in completely unfriendly, easy to hurt yourself with packaging. Aha. There, we've extracted the MX2 from the package. Now, there are a few different schools of thought on thermal compound application, and one is that you should put a blob the size of an uncooked grain of rice in the middle. There's also the line application method. So we're going to show you the blob application method on the AMD CPU, and then we'll do the line application method on the Intel CPU. Okay, so now that we have the thermal compound applied, we can go ahead and install the AMD stock cooler back on by putting first this side of the bracket over the retention clip. Then you take the side with the plastic arm and push that down on its retention clip. And then you take the plastic arm and push it back into its original position so that the heat sink is nice and secure. Then you take your fan connector and plug it back into the CPU fan motherboard header. So there you are. We've replaced the stock thermal compound on our CPU. Next up, Intel installation. Now to remove the stock heatsink from your Intel motherboard, first you use a screwdriver to turn all four of the push pins in the direction of the arrow one quarter turn. You will hear them release as you go around and turn them. Once all the push pins are disengaged, you can go ahead and unplug the fan and remove the Intel heatsink from your CPU. Now, as you can see, as with the AMD CPU and heatsink, there is a lot of residue left over, so we'll clean them in much the same way as we did the AMD one. 
So now I've removed it, same, same procedure, so you can now see that they are clean. And so we're going to talk about the line method of application this time. So you will be squeezing a line along the IHS, or the heat spreader, of the CPU, just like this. Now one thing that's really important to remember when you're applying thermal compound is that less is more. You never want to use too much. So what I've done is, after applying the thermal grease to the Intel CPU, I've gone ahead and I've removed the CPU heatsink again. Now you can see that there's actually very little in terms of residue, both on the CPU and on the stock heatsink. That's good. If you have it kind of overflowing around the edges and around the edges here and here, then that's, you should really clean it up and reapply it because less is going to give you better thermal transfer. Now we're demonstrating this on a Core 2 Duo, but on a Core 2 Quad, the line method is particularly effective because there are actually two cores under there, so getting it more spread out is better. Now, to put the stock heatsink back on, you want to make sure all the push pins are pulled out all the way, turn them back against the direction of the arrow, and then you can line it up with the holes on the CPU socket and push them all back in one at a time in opposite corners and then replug the fan back in. And there you have it. Now we've changed the thermal compound on an Intel based system. Alright, thank you for watching today's edition of NCIX Tech Tips on installing thermal compound. We'll do more interesting stuff with this later, but we just got it. So, um, thank you for watching.